Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you. My name is Emilie Raffo. Uh, you know what? Before starting, I would like to do a little thing. You know, um, there's a, a woman who says that posture really influences us, you know? And I think I would like to influence you a little bit. I would like you all to stand up and to do the Superman pose. Do you guys feel like Superman now? Yeah? yeah? Cool. Now you can sit down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, you feel like Superman, right? <laughs> Superwoman. Precisely. Yeah. Oh my God, my bad. I feel, I feel terrible. I should have said, next time I will. Um, so, I uh, am from Geneva. I live in Geneva. I'm from Belgium. Uh, so I speak a bit of Dutch with a special accent, you know? <laughs> uh, and over there, I organize the blockchain for good meetups. Uh, so over there, we're kind of trying to give the floor to people who work on projects, the kind of projects I told you about before, so that have a positive social impact. Um, I have my personal preference on projects that still make money, because uh, I think it's more sustainable. But then we also uh, have NGOs. Um, and I also work at ODEM, uh, which is an education project, and it aims at making high-quality education affordable for everyone. And I'll tell you about this uh, later in the presentation. So basically, there's going to be two parts. The first, uh, I'm going to talk about blockchain in developing countries, namely, how can it improve public governance and financial inclusion? And then I'm going to talk about uh, blockchain for education, so the problems that there are, and how we can use uh, uh, blockchain to solve them. So first, I'd like to ask you a question. For you, what are the advantages of the blockchain technology? Can you just shout out some words uh, that you think are? Transparency. Transparency. Trust. 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 Privacy. Okay, great. Accountability. Accountability. Good. Hmm? Decentralization. Decentralization. <laughs> that too, and immutability. All right, so that's great. Like you know your stuff, I, I can tell. And um, then I'm going to ask you another thing: What are, according to you, the problems of the developing countries? What prevents them from, you know, moving forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of the discussion is also going to be why am I going back to having to get a trust card for mm -mm. a phone yeah. that exists for an hour that doesn't have internet? So a lack of technological infrastructure? Yeah. Because you have to run your computer to get on the blockchain. Mm -mm. Yeah. Hey, hey, good. Don't, don't steal my points. <laughs> He's making the presentation instead of me. No, that's, that's really good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, corruption and transparency, totally. Inequality, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a, a problem, you know, uh, in uh, um, uh, distributing financial resources, for sure. I think fraud as well, like you, you can see fraud in the pharmaceutical industry, the drug fraud. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> so um, basically, I think you kind of see me coming with this. Uh, there are a lot of synergies between the advantages of the blockchain and the problems of the developing world. Uh, what the developing countries lack, the blockchain can provide. And this is kind of uh, the, the kind of projects and use cases I'm going to, to present today. So the first part is going to be about public governance. Um, so basically, uh, it's very important that people trust the society they live in. So there have been many academic research that shown that if you don't trust your government, if you don't trust your government to allocate financial resources, to take care of you, to 
you know, to do the thing we take for granted here in Europe. Well, it impedes uh, economic growth, it impedes uh, um, uh, education, it impedes, uh, you know, to create infrastructure, for example. It impedes actually everything and also investment coming from the outside and investment within the country. You know, the money doesn't turn. And so it creates a lot of problem that people don't trust the institutions of their countries. And for this, so uh, there is one, uh, one case, the property registries. So here, you know, if you buy a house, you go to the notary, uh, uh, I think he's gone, but you go to the notary and like he registers it and you're sure that it's going to be your house, you know, you know that no one is going to come, someone from the, the other village and say, no, that's my house. And then you have no way to prove that it's not your, that it's yours, you know, and not his. And this is kind of difficult in some developing countries. Um, because they have centralized registries that are unfortunately outdated. Uh, so they have old info. Uh, and uh, also because it's centralized, you know, it can, people can be bribed to change what's in it. So it's not immutable. And this is, this is kind of a huge problem because you can just go bribe an official and then you buy a house at a huge discount. You just have to pay the bribe. And also, even if you are not, you know, ill-intended, even if you don't have bad intentions, um, because the centralized registries are uh, a bit, you know, outdated, well, people keep local registries, you know, they start with the decentralization, but the problem is people don't talk to each other. Different communities don't talk to each other. So you're going to have one village with one land registry, you know, and then the next village is going to have other information. And this creates a lot of disputes and actually ownership of property is not clear. And um, so for this problem, uh, there is a Bitland NGO. So I have nothing to do with them. <laughs> just to say, I have nothing to do. I just love the project. So basically, they are working with uh, uh, the authorities in Ghana to create a land registry on the blockchain. So many people, you know, kind of talk about uh, the problem of uh, integration. You know, you have a, a great ecosystem in the blockchain. In, in some blockchains, you know, you have great communities. But then it's hard to kind of go from the fiat, the legacy world, to this blockchain space, you know? And here they're really trying to integrate the law, the actual country, the national law and the national information. And they're trying to put these on the blockchain and they are trying to collaborate with the authorities with that, for that. So um, right now where they're at, uh, so they have the problem that you mentioned, you know, to have a running blockchain, you have, uh, you need internet, you need energy. And actually the, it is kind of, it is actually kind of a problem, you know, in these countries to have a continuous energy supply and a continuous internet access. And uh, at the moment, Bitland is uh, trying to solve these problems by creating local stations um, with independent in internet and like solar panels to uh, and solar energy to run them. So this is kind of a, uh, I think, in my opinion, would be kind of a good solution to go forwards with blockchain solutions for Africa to have solar energy and independent internet. Um, so now, yeah, identity documents. If you, uh, if you don't have identity documents, you can't vote, you can't open a bank account, you can't uh, apply for a scholarship or go to an NGO and ask for help. And those NGOs who accept, uh, you know, people with uh, uh, kind of not the greatest uh, identi identity documents, well, those NGOs are, are going to need a lot of time to verify everything, to verify your identity. And uh, actually even companies, you know, if companies go to developing countries and they have to check to have huge verification processes for the identities of people, well then it's, it actually increases the cost of going to these countries and thus making them less competitive and preventing them from developing. You know, it makes everything more expensive if you have to, if you need extra security for everything. And this is why it's really important uh, uh, to address this issue of identity documents. And the thing is, um, you see, people uh, in remote areas, they have too much barriers to, they have too much obstacles to go and, and register in the, in the, in like the official registries or registers, register the, the birth of their kids. It's really difficult for them, you know, they have to travel far, there's, yeah, anyway, there's no transport and so on. Um, and so people don't do it. People don't have identity documents 
and we kind of uh, there would be a solution with this. It would be both registries on the blockchain. So basically, uh, the idea would be um, to make people able to register newborns with their mobile phone uh, in a decentralized birth registry. Um, so that might sound a bit crazy, you know? like you're at the hospital, you just had your kid and you just put it, put it in your phone and that's it, the kid is registered. Hmm? <laughs> so he can pay taxes. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Totally, but also to vote and to you know receive healthcare if there is. <laughs> um, yeah, and actually uh, doing this uh, might seem kind of uh, kind of crazy, but it isn't. There is already uh, in Senegal, uh, Orange, you know the telecom company Orange. Well, they have a birth registration uh, process where you can use your phone uh, to send the info to a centralized registry. And you can just register a newborn with your phone, like if you work at a hospital, if you're a local agent. So it's really easy. Even if you're in a remote area, you just need a phone. And um, But on-chain, it's also... How many of you guys know a startup called Tycoon? It's a... Uh, it's, uh, yeah, cool. It's actually uh, from around here, from the Netherlands. And uh, they are trying to have uh, identity documents, driver license, uh, passports, and so on, on the blockchain so that it would be immutable. Because identity is a given to us, but it's not a given to, to everyone. So um, there's this. Um, so this one, it's, you know, you have to cooperate with authorities, so maybe startups won't really go for it. It's mostly for NGOs, you know, it's not, there's not much money to make in there. Um, for this one, either, uh, but for these one, for this one, there is money to make. So tracking public finances. Um, as all of you know, there is a problem of corruption in developing countries, and uh, there is a, a huge potential to uh, not erase, but to diminish, to reduce this corruption by having uh, processes by having uh, budget tracking tools, budget tracking systems that are decentralized and that control how governments spend their money and if they allocate it the way they said they would. But I guess you have a question now, like why, as a government official, I'm taking so much money in my pockets, why would I put a system that's going to monitor me and prevent me from doing so? Ah, totally. Same for this. Actually, yeah, yeah. Actually, there are several companies uh, for this. Uh, one in the UK, one in uh, one here in Amsterdam. Um, for this, there is actually one in Sweden, um, because you know, as uh, uh, Raji said before, the notary takes so much money when you register your house, when you buy a house. This is crazy. The the money they get, these guys take, and actually in Sweden they are uh, seeing this initiative to just reduce the cost of selling and, and buying your house. So these projects can totally apply yeah, for uh, developed countries, that's true. I guess there was an old joke in IT, when you find something that you can replace with a script. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, now the question would be, why as a government official, why if I'm the president of a developing country and I'm taking so much money in my pockets, why would I implement such a system that's going to monitor me and prevent me from doing so? And this is why uh, there is a need for collaboration with NGOs in this. Uh, it, uh, could be, it could be applied uh, if NGOs link this to uh, the granting of aids of development programs. So, uh, for example, if a president wants to make some roads, well, if you want to make roads, it's, it, the budget has to be on the blockchain, you know, something like that. And so this might have a potential to work. And actually, NGOs are huge demanders of, uh, of this, you know, of budget tracking tools, because they want to be as transparent as possible to raise as much funds as possible. And as they would be the one to buy this system, to then impose it to uh, the, the beneficiary of the helps, then this is something that actually has a, a lot of uh, commercial uh, potential. So, we talked about the public sector, now I'm going to talk about the financial sector. <clears throat> um, why do you, get, do you guys think it's important to have access to the financial sector? Do you think it's important to be able to open a bank account or have a savings account, be able to get a loan and so on? So that's a super rhetorical question because you, <laughs> you just can't say no. Um, so, 
this is a huge problem. We keep on talking in the crypto world, we keep on talking about banking the unbanked. That's like the catchphrase for 5,000 ICOs, right? Banking the unbanked. Uh, but this, this is actually a huge issue. Um, because if you can't get access to a loan, for example, if you're an SME, if you can't get access to a loan, you can't, you can't grow, you can't buy machines, you can't innovate. It's, it's really a problem. And um, so there are uh, a few uh, awesome innovations, I think, in this sector. Uh, for example, the decentralized credit scoring database. So that would be kind of a, uh, so a decentralized ledger that would be shared between financial actors that grant you know, microloans and stuff like that. And for example, if you live in a remote community, if you live in a remote village, you go and ask for a, a small loan. Well, you know, if you have no collateral, because your house is not uh, on the land registry, <laughs> if you have no collateral, then people can only look at one thing. It's your, your reputation, basically. It's your ability to repay your loan, your, your willingness to repay your loan, and then, <coughs> apologies, your willingness to repay your loans, and then if you are already in debt, for example. So um, with this, we want to allow they, not we, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not in it. Um, people want to allow uh, several institutions, uh, finance institutions, to go in and insert information on the people that come in and ask for loan, the people that pay the loan, and so we can create kind of a, a credit rating agency. I don't know if you know in the US they have credit scoring agency and you have like this score, you know, and this follows you for life. This is really like, if you're there, you can get a loan for everything. If you're there, you can't even buy a car, you know. And um, this would be something kind of like that, but which would protect the privacy of people by, uh, by you know, letting them choose who can access their own information. And with this, people could actually get much bigger loans uh, or could get loans, uh, just loans, because so many people can't. Um, yeah, there's that. Then the peer-to-peer um, the -peer banking services. So basically, it's, it kind of relies on the same reputation principle, um, but uh, in, a, in a more person-to-person -person fashion, you know? So, for example, I mean, I guess you all know the, the marketplace kind of, uh, kind of talk. So if I have money and I don't know what to do with it, I want to invest and get interest and you want a loan, then, you know, I can go through the platform and lend it to you, like the usual stuff. But actually, it's, yeah, it seems fairly... Uh, usual to us, but it's kind of hard to implement, you know, and put this in, in really a, a fashion that you can trust. And this is, I mean, all of you know uh, that the trust that blockchain brings, it's always come back to the same thing, trust, and this would cre really create a trustless environment where, you know, it would be like you knew everyone and that you could lend money to everyone as if it was your brother, you know, so, um, or your sister. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is also uh, really something uh, that that could work. And so for for these, there is already initiatives uh, for this one. So uh, uh, finance institutions in developing countries are already trying to get together and kind of uh, you know create these databases and uh, and and have more information to be able to do the job in a better way. But the problem is it, is it is centralized and it is so expensive that small actors cannot enter the data, you know, on this database. And um, so there is a huge, there are huge barriers to entry uh, in, in these associations. And actually, th the most actors that are there are small institutions for micro microfinance. And so a lot of data can't get in there and a lot of institutions also can't pull data from uh, this database. So uh, it's really something that people want, and it just needs to be implemented. <laughs> um, and this, uh, yeah, this is more disruptive and maybe m less easy to, to, to put out there, but this is really a great opportunity. Um, so yeah, that was the financial sector, and I'm going to get a bit deeper into the education sector. Um, how many of you guys here uh, went to high school and finished high school? Yeah, pretty much everyone. How many of you guys uh, went to university and finished university? Awesome. And how many of you guys took an online class in like Coursera or Khan Academy or something like that? 
Yeah. And did you finish it? Who finished it? Wow, that's that beats the odds, you know? <laughs> You know, uh, in most statistics, um, people who finish the classes, the online classes, are between 5 and 10%. 90 to 95% don't finish online classes. Um, so yeah. They're not here. Yeah, I mean, people who are at a meetup, totally, people who are at a meetup at 10 p.m. finish their online classes. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. And all of, those, all of you watching, too. Um, so, education, there are many barriers to education, you know, that keep uh, people who are less well off to participate in the education system. Um, so, for example, there is the four year degree model, you know, that I don't know, when you guys went to university, you have learned so much stuff, but have you used all of it? Like, have you used 70% or maybe even 40%? Um, <laughs> of what you of what you studied, and actually we uh, have to study long, long, long for a long time, and at the end we often end up in the marketplace not really prepared for the challenges of the of the professional life, you know. And in Belgium, there are many people who study. Uh, yeah, I won't I won't point out sectors, but some sectors, you know. And they have a master's degree and they cannot find a good job for their qualifications. People who are underemployed. And this represents 20% of the global workforce. So one out of five people works under their skills. And I mean, you, you yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I can't say it in English, I'm sorry. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to show you a small video. Uh, if I can figure out how to do it. Ah, mais oui, mais la clé USB est débranchée. I think the USB stick is gone. What do you mean? There was a USB stick here. And what do you mean it's gone? It's uh, gone. The w it was here. Yep, that's the one. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's not the same computer, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I didn't set it up. Uh, up. Or maybe there is a problem with me. Or maybe we can uh I also have a Mac and I don't know how to use it. Uh -huh. so All right. It this is one? yes. Ah, there's no sound. Do we have the sound? Yeah. Where is it? Where is this? No. No. It's right here. Okay. Uh, I think it's best because otherwise no, it's, it's, it's difficult to say true. Okay. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, can you put it in the uh, full screen? All right. So n no video? <laughs> um, yeah, so basically it was saying kind of the same thing as me, but in a more entertaining manner with music, you know, like the classic uh, ICO video. Um, yeah, so basically uh, with Odin what we want to do is... Uh, so, do you guys know about Odom? I think, uh, anyone knows about Odom here? Cool. Oh, just two people. W was it last week with Rich? Yeah, okay. So, if I'm re repeating myself too much, just tell me and, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll move faster. And, uh, thank you. And, uh, so, okay, what we want to do is basically to remove the intermediaries uh, who uh, are actually taking a lot of money. You know, between a student and a teacher, an uh, in, in international student and a teacher, there are going to be five intermediaries who all take 15%. So it's like
like um, independent education consultant and na 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 na. And all these people in the middle take 15%, and this rises up the the cost of uh, the cost of education. And we have seen that it soared uh, these last few years. Uh, yeah, I thought there was going to be a number, but there's not. Um, it saw these last few years, and here in Europe, we have the chance, you know, not to have to pay for our education ourselves. You know, we have the state subsidizing it, and I, I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's really great. But in many countries, people have to get into so much debt to get an education, and then when they finish their education, they are not prepared for the for the for the job market, and they can't repay their debts. And there are, just in the U.S. There are seven million young people under 30 who are financial delinquents. So people who can't repay their debt, they're not even 30 years old, and they're already financial delinquents. And we really want to create a model where the student could interact directly with their teachers, you know, and uh, get classes that are skill-based. So you could choose a skill that you want to, le to, to learn. You could talk with your teacher directly, and then um, you know, create a class that's made for you. And you would see this class actually right here in live. You know? this, this would not be an online class. You would come in a classroom, talk to the teacher with other students. You know? And um, with this, at the end of this, you would pass an exam and get an actual diploma. So this is just a platform to, to connect people, but this is, not, uh, this is not an online class thing. This is really live classes, because we believe that uh, it is important to create a network when you study. It's important to meet other students who have the same interest. It's important to learn all the social skills that you get during university. It's, it's, it's a very important part of your life. And um, we want to do this uh, with the blockchain technology and with artificial intelligence because uh, it, can, it can really streamline all the problems uh, from this industry. So, for example, all those intermediaries, well, we just replace them uh, with smart contracts, so the teacher, the teacher is sure to get paid, the student is sure he's not going to pay, she's not going to pay. <laughs> I'm using the masculine all the time, my God. <laughs> um, the student can be sure she's not going to pay uh, if she doesn't get her lesson. And, uh, and also, so on the platform, people are going to be able to negotiate what is going to be the location, what is going to be the price, what exactly is going to be the, 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 the kind of, uh, of skills that the student is going to get. And so this really is to make uh, the student communicate directly with the teacher and so that everyone gets what they want. Because teachers also end up not being able to teach what they would like. And for example, um, I, I always take this example, if you're a teacher at Harvard, you know, and you, you really love cryptocurrencies and you really love the blockchain space, well, you cannot <laughs> go on there and say, okay, let's create a program on cryptocurrencies and it's going to start next month. You can't do that. And we were in Paris last week and the teacher was just saying about that, that he got yelled at by, his, uh, by the management of the school because he made a class on blockchain and Bitcoin to explain what's going on with this and that, you know, the, the students don't just read about it in, in the paper in a stupid manner, you know, and he got yelled at by his management. So teachers are not free to share their expertise the way they want to, to do it, you know. And so we really want to give them the power back, to give the power back to the teachers as well as the students who can choose and compare easily. So, um, yeah, and I don't know, maybe you'd like to know more about how we use the tech for this, or should I go a bit more in the tech, or should we go and drink? Tech? One tech? Three tech? Five? Okay, I'll go in the tech. I feel like I kind of forced you into it, but... <laughs> um, so yeah, basically we use the blockchain for four different things. Um, first, uh, we kind of have a, a consortium network within the community where we're going to store all the requirements and the commitments of all actors, you know, because first we have this negotiation before starting the class, right? <clears throat> and uh, the thing is, so I gave you an example with one student and one teacher, but actually in real life, what's going to happen is you're going to have 50 students, maybe 100 students, several professors that are going to have to travel 
to stay at some place, and this is also organized by Odom, you know, like their accommodation and, and everything around the, the travel. And so this has actually a lot of actors having to decide on a lot of parameters, and it's a hugely complex equation. And so we put all the data for this equation in kind of a consortium network, uh, a, a database that is, you know, like maintained by all the actors in our community. Um, and the artificial intelligence, the Odem bot, is going to use these informations to solve this equation and create an educational program. So it's really going to be created uh, uh, case per case, uh, depending on what the people want, you know? So it's going to create this program, and then once everyone agrees, uh, the smart contract is going to be created. So it's a regular Ethereum smart contract, um, uh, and that, uh, the, Summarizes, yeah, uh, what everyone agreed on upon, and then uh, people are going to use the the ERC twenty token to to transact. Uh, this we do to avoid the uh, transaction fees, uh, and we have used. I don't. Do you guys know Sweet Bridge? Do you know Sweet Bridge? Yeah. Well, they have developed um, a, a discount model that is supposed to really incentivize to use the token for its actual value and not for speculation. So it's supposed to protect us from pump and dump schemes and from crazy fluctuations. And this is why we use this token instead of just Ether or another cryptocurrency. Um, and then, uh, the, so that's uh, three and four we register the diplomas on the blockchain. So we create a hash of the diploma and, and publish it on the public blockchain. And yeah, that was the technical part. I guess, I guess I'm done. We can go to some questions. How does that voting system work? Because if I see that, you know, I could imagine in my mind that the same problem that created that is not the same mind that's going to solve it. So therefore, what I'm getting at is, if you have an educational system where everyone votes on, you know, let's do, we want to do X, uh, a certain percentage want to do Y, a certain percentage want to do Z. But when it comes to that consensus, you know, how are you going to stop like a takeover of the consensus that says, we want to eat ice cream on Wednesdays. And that's what we want to do for, you know, three months. <laughs> because, it, I mean, that's, you know, yeah. it's hypothetical, but what I mean about that is mm -hmm. it's a takeover of the consensus system yeah. of, you know, groups getting together yeah. like they have been for, yeah. you know. Yeah, totally. It's a, it's a, it's a really good centuries. question. Um, so I, I think Thanks. basically the, 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 the risk, uh, you know, if a certain group uh, takes control of this, is that you would end up um, as as a student as a student being able to kind of buy a diploma like you would eat ice cream on Wednesdays but then at the end you'll get a diploma from a professor and be like yeah I have learned some skills when actually you haven't and this is uh, really a huge risk and this is why we have this uh, reputation system where um, so you know we collaborate with companies you know to create educational programs and. Ideally, uh, what we would like is to be able to create programs and that students could go to companies right away you know, with these programs that we de develop with them. And so if a teacher uh, g hands out a diploma for free, <laughs> for money but not for skills, well, um, the student is going to go to the company not having learned the skills and then the, the reputation of the teacher is going to go down the drain and uh, actually there's no incentive uh, on the... It's maybe there's an incentive on the very short term, like you can do one operation and then you're you're off. You know, you get a too bad, too worse reputation. To so it's like an oracle reputational system. Uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so an oracle is like you know a central repository. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, at first, uh, we are we are going to have this, and so it's not going to be completely centralized because uh, people will be able to uh, also like um, uh, assess the assessments as well. You know, the community is also going to be able to check that um, because I mean, for example, imagine you take a class and the teacher gives you an F or whatever 
how do you say it in Holland when someone flunks you? A zero? zero. Yeah. Uh, that someone gives you this, uh, well, you can say, all right, he's a terrible teacher, when actually you're a terrible student. And this is why we really want uh, the, uh, the, uh, the reviews. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> so we really want uh, this to, that, that the community checks the review as well. You know, to be careful of humans propagating systems that have been put on them and enslaved, uh, you know, um, with them. It's a work in progress, yeah, you know, absolutely. you start and you, and you keep on... The revolution, you know, has begun. I think you had a question. I had a question, but maybe you already uh, answered it the way. I was just wondering, like, um, how, how do you become, like, a, a teacher? So, yeah. I think you already explained it a bit in a way that if you're a bad teacher, it, the system will find you very quickly. I already explained how you... Uh, I'm not a teacher anymore, but not how I, yeah, how you become a teacher, that's true. Um, so basically, uh, at the moment, uh, this is going to be something that's, uh, that's centralized, because right now we, you know, the reputation system it has not started enough, you know, so we, we can't uh, start with a system that doesn't exist, with reputations that don't exist. So what we're going to, to, the way we're going to start is in a centralized manner, um, and basically we're going to check, to do background checks, uh, basically everything they do in the school, you know, background checks, uh, um, accreditation checks, and so on. And uh, we are also going to accept uh, people who are not from the academia, but who are uh, excellent entrepreneurs, for example. You know, people who have uh, uh, actual life, life skills, we are also going to accept people like that. But it's going to be very severe checks. And at the moment, we already have um, over 200 uh, professors from Ivy League schools and uh, high-achieving entrepreneurs who want to be professors on the platform. So, so basically, if you're like an, you feel you are an expert on, on some subject, you could just basically apply. Apply. And then, if there are like enough enough students also demanding a class, that could could actually happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, 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 right. Totally. As long as everything you say checks out and everything is true, of course, and you can <laughs> verify it. Then, yeah, sure. If you're an expert, you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> But then we I think nothing gets, gets on the mic for the, the, the line. I think you should... What? <laughs> yeah, this uh, stays Thanks. on for two seconds and then it yeah, turns off. I, I yeah. understand what you're saying about, you know, uh, privacy and transparency and rah, rah, rah. And everyone goes, yeah, yeah, we want privacy and transparency. But I've got to tell you, you don't fucking have that now. The NSA has every single email, every single bit of digital information that you've ever sent. Have got. So saying that you want to protect your financial transactions, you may as well piss in a bucket and throw it out the window and go, it's raining. It's really retarded because the banks have all your stuff. 
someone gets hacked, don't got all that information as well. No, it's not what I was talking well, no, about. No, I was not you, talking no, about no. personal information. Yeah, I was yeah, talking no, no. about the fact that you said Yeah. On the internet, you can find every kind of information so that everyone can actually yeah. become an expert on anything. And then I was saying, then on we you. could wonder with what kind of... Yes, yes, exactly. That is, yeah, yeah, totally. So um, he was saying uh, that uh, Odem uh, could be a way to get rid of all the fake experts that can teach you, like, you know, become a trader and earn $10,000 per second kind of schemes. And totally, totally. Yeah, you know, like those ads you see on the internet where you can earn a crazy amount of money by staying at home. And I think, okay, okay. And uh, yeah, this is really something that we want to do is to uh, basically give people the ability to learn and to be sure that the, that the people who pretend to be teachers are actually teachers. And we want to really put people in trusted environments where they could, uh, yeah, they could choose and compare prices in a, in a really transparent way. Yeah.